Welcome to episode 6 of my Score Streak Variant Review series. If you missed my last episode on the Scorchers, you can find the link in the outro as well as the description. In this episode, I'll be covering the Vulture. First up is the rare variant called the Kamikaze, which can be crafted for 150 salvage. This one has the self-destruct perk, which makes the Vulture have lower health, but the ability to seek out and explode on a nearby target when reaching critical levels. So first things first. The duration of the Kamikaze is identical to the standard Vulture, which is a whopping 60 seconds. The downfall of the Vulture score streak in general is that it's relatively fragile. It can be destroyed with basic weapon fire fairly easily. And speaking of its health, let's take a closer look at this aspect. The biggest drawback of the Kamikaze would appear to be its lower health, or at least that's the way it's supposed to work. Watch here as the standard Vulture gets called in. Using the Mauler Mammoth, it takes exactly four bullets to destroy it. Now for the Kamikaze variant, using the same weapon, it remains four shots to activate the self-destruct mode. Considering the description states it has lower health, I would have assumed this would have taken three shots or less to destroy. However, it appears to have identical health to the standard Vulture. Now knowing this, that means this variant has nothing but bonuses compared to the standard one. That is, until you dive a bit deeper into the Kamikaze explosion effect. The blast radius of the explosion is massive, almost three times as big as a C4 blast. If you couple in the fact that it also seeks out the enemy, as in, it'll fly directly to you before exploding, it makes it even more awe-inspiring. However, it's not all smiles and sunshine, as there's quite a few issues here. First, Blast Shield completely counters the explosion. You can be right under it when it detonates and you'll survive. Second, Blind Eye also completely counters the streak altogether. Not only will it not fire at you, but it won't seek you out upon destruction either. What's worse, if the owner isn't wearing Blast Shield, they'll end up dying from the explosion as it'll detonate right in their face since it won't have anyone to target. Now this could be good or bad depending on if you called it in yourself or if you're doing the destroying. Third, if the Kamikaze reaches its time limit and never gets shot at, it won't detonate. So in essence, it'll be just a normal vulture with no special capabilities in that scenario. I would have liked if it still sought out people upon reaching its time limit though. Now lastly, and most importantly, if you continue firing at the Kamikaze, it'll just explode where it's at. In all the clips I've shown, I've purposely stopped firing when it reached its explosion phase. And I did that so it would seek me out. In an actual game though, no one's gonna do that. They'll just keep firing at it until it explodes. That means that it'll never seek you out and it'll blow up near whoever called it in, resulting in their demise instead of your own. And this is a huge downfall if you ask me. So while the explosion is powerful and it doesn't appear to have lower health like it should, there's just far too many consequences for the owner that called it in. More often than not, it'll be them who dies from the explosion and not the enemy. Next up is the legendary variant called Ambush, which can be crafted for 300 salvage. This one has the Sentry perk, which replaces the Vulture's radar mode with the ability to guard a specified location. The only drawback to this streak is that it loses the radar mode. Chances are though, you probably didn't bother much with the radar mode in the first place. Now upon checking the health of the Ambush, it's the same as the standard Vulture in that it only takes 4 bullets from a Mauler Mammoth to destroy. So upon calling this one in, you'll notice that it says to hold square to set the Vulture to the sentry mode. Once you do this, the Vulture instantly freezes in place wherever it was when you held the button and remains motionless, essentially turning it into a flying sentry gun. To change it back to assault mode, simply hold the square button again. Now I'm sure most of you are thinking, what the hell is the point of that? It's hard to believe that anyone would want to purposely freeze it in place so your enemies can shoot it even more easily. However, you have to be creative here. They didn't call it the ambush for no reason. The moment you hold the square button, regardless of where you are, the vulture will freeze. Use that to your strategic advantage. What I mean by that is, get to the high ground where no one would expect it. Jumping sky high and then holding square will result in it being above where most people would be looking. However, you can and should do better than that. Find the highest point you can physically reach and hold square in midair. If you're a skilled wall runner, you can also use this to your advantage by running along a high ledge and then exploding off of it for maximum height. If you position it ideally, you've set the perfect ambush. Not only can it see more of the map from higher up, but again, most people won't expect it to be soaring 100 feet above them. More importantly, 
the enemy now has to look up to engage it, and chances are you yourself will be lurking nearby. So if an enemy turns his attention upwards, that'll leave them quite exposed for you to finish them off. Thus, the sentry perk can be quite effective if utilized strategically. Likewise, though, it can be near useless if used incorrectly. Lastly, we have the epic variant called the Dragonfly, which can be crafted for 450 salvage. This one has the Guard Dog perk, which makes the Vulture move slower, but also allows it to patrol an area looking for targets instead of following you. While it's true that all the Vultures are more or less a set it and forget it score streak, this one is a souped up version of that mentality. Instead of depending on your own movements to find and kill enemies, it has a mind of its own as you'll soon see. Now on paper, this sounds incredible. Call it in and watch as it actively roams and slaughters all your foes. In actuality though, it suffers from an incredibly idiotic AI. So first, let's discuss its supposed major drawback, which is the reduced movement speed. It's tough to accurately gauge this due to not knowing the route a dragonfly will take, but from what I can tell in private matches, this is barely noticeable. What I did was have a dragonfly get called in, followed by a normal vulture. The guy who called in the normal vulture would then try his best to chase the dragonfly. The fact that a dragonfly can outrun a person should alert you that it's not slow by any means. I'm sure if a normal vulture could do those random routes as well, you'd notice a decreased speed from the dragonfly. But since the vulture is dependent on the owner for its own speed, both the normal vulture and the dragonfly were pretty much going the same speeds at all time. So if the slower movement speed deterred you away from using the dragonfly, you should reconsider. Next, we need to discuss the dragonfly's route running capabilities. Sometimes it appears like a spawn camping aimbot. Other times, it decides to go full newbie booby mode and do absolutely nothing. So in this first example, it instantly seeks out its target at the B flag. Upon killing him, it abruptly turns around. Now this is not just a mere coincidence, but rather it knows exactly where he respawns and seeks to add more insult to injury. Again, after killing him, it instantly changes positions once more and backtracks. If you manage to get a dragonfly that acts like this in a public match, you should definitely consider yourself lucky and expect anywhere from 4 to 8 kills, depending on if any of your enemies are running blind eye or not. Now when all is said and done in this example, this dragonfly knew the spawn of my enemy four times and killed him all four times. Now let's take a look at the more common idiotic dragonfly. So I start off by calling it in on the A flag here. It instantly heads towards the B flag. Now I should note that there are three enemies here standing stationary near the C flag. All of them are without blind eye so they should all be fair game. But upon getting to the B flag, it decides to turn around and head backwards, this time near the middle of the map. Instead of turning left or right here, it decides to go near a wall, stop, and then turn around again. This time, it goes back to the location where it just departed from at the B flag. Again, it goes about the same distance as it did the first time, and then it turns around again. This time, it heads back to where I originally called it in at at the A flag. So as you can see, it did absolutely nothing for me except run in circles, not even coming close to my three enemies. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, this is the more common theme for the dragonfly. It appears that the more enemies on the map, the worse it seems to perform. If there's only one single enemy, then it appears to go directly to the spawns. Watch here as I call in my dragonfly in a public match. Shortly after calling it in, an advanced UAV also gets called in. We now can see where each and every enemy is, which further illustrates the incompetence of the dragonfly. Where the hell did it think it was going here? It's heading in the opposite direction of any of my enemies. You can clearly see that all the enemies are on one side of the map, yet it continues on its merry way towards the back of the map, where only my teammates are. I'd say that this is how 9 out of 10 of my dragonflies performed, and I got 0 kills every time. And that, as they say, is that. The Vulture is a disappointing score streak in Infinite Warfare for a variety of reasons. Not to mention that most of you who prestige on a regular basis probably have hardly ever used the Vulture to begin with, let alone a variant of it. And this is because it's such a late level unlock. To make matters worse, the Vulture is easily countered by Blind Eye. And even without Blind Eye, you can dodge and weave its machine gun after a recent nerf that it got. Now the Kamikaze variant has potential, but it's countered by far too many things. And more often than not will result in the death of the user instead of your enemies. I'd say the ambush variant is the best one, simply because it can be a nice distraction and cause a ruckus for unsuspecting foes. The dragonfly is hit or miss, with the miss rearing its ugly head more than I would like. 
If you get that spawn-seeking dragonfly, you'll love it. Odds are, though, you'll get the feeble-minded, mentally defective version, which will just roam in the back of the map where no enemies are for 90% of its lifespan. If you do use the dragonfly, I highly recommend only doing so on smaller maps such as Frontier or Genesis. Overall, Infinite Warfare's Vulture is eerily similar to the real-life one. Vultures are the most righteous of birds, but they don't attack even the smallest living creature.